We have a couple of questions before we move on. A couple of questions. Uh, we sort of answered this one, but do you think Roy ever actually had anything wrong with him throughout? Well, I mean, it's kind of hard because I don't. I'm gonna. I'm not speaking from a point of of expertness, and I don't want to like, you know, offend anybody because I'm ignorant of this. But I was, like a lot of times, OCD can be caused by external factors in your life or something. Like I know. It may not may not be it may be an actual chemical imbalance, but like it could be an actual neurosis where it's caused by stuff. So he could have had OCD tendencies because of his guilty conscience and then mm -hmm. working yeah. through them, cleared it up. So, you know. yeah, I kind of had that feeling, too, of like it, it, it pops up when he's feeling bad about himself or when he's done something bad. Um, but when he's around Angela and stuff, it just goes away completely. And when he's happy, he's, he doesn't have any of the symptoms whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's self-imposed kind of punishment of his yeah. conscience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which I think is a real thing. Like that's a very real mental yeah. issue people can have. <laughs> yeah. When you, when you, yeah, when you stress people out, certain tendencies will come out. And then they'll subside as they become more relaxed. And yeah. I, I think you're right. I think they're, I think OCD is one of those things that does come on as a stressor, but then it also can be a chemical imbalance as well. It's mental yeah. health is not black and white. Yeah. yeah. So. I know in high school, my <laughs> wife got sent to a psychiatrist because her parents said that she had OCD or thought she did because she was like very obsessive about washing her hands about stuff. And the psychiatrist sort of diagnosed her with mild OCD, but. Uh, it went away eventually, you know, just learning. It was more about just her parents were too controlling and she had issues that she had to work through. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't like she needed drugs or anything, but he prescribed her some medication for it, but it was more like, I don't know, Paxil or whatever shit they give. <laughs> just go to mellow Metabon supplements. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I know it's possible to get diagnosed with some form of OCD, but have it just be cleared up through therapy. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Seems like most people who have these, you know, uh, mental disorders of some kind are in therapy to try and work through them. And sometimes they can control them and sometimes they can't, you know, <clears throat> I think it just, yeah. yeah. Like you said, it's like not black and white. Tourette's you can't control, like, yes. you know, yeah. no matter what you do. Yeah. So his Tourette's just goes away completely Yeah, when he's not thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think maybe his obsessive compulsive was something, you know, real but mm -hmm. i don't think the tourette's was ever real but he does slash out like <laughs> when he tells the guy if he's ever been beaten till he pissed blood and mm -hmm. he has those freak outs the when he says wackos in the at the yeah. beginning and yeah but i don't know if anything he might again. be more like a hypochondriac where he just imagines yeah. he has yeah. all these mental illnesses and like that's a real condition people can have yeah so. So, yep yeah that makes sense then, yeah well like those freak outs like the, once again, you introduce stress into somebody's life and then they have this idea in their head that they suffer from a syndrome or some kind of disease mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll amp it. I mean, it's just, it's a placebo effect both ways, right? Yeah. P people can create these, uh, disorders in their head because they're stressed out and, and it's kind of like behaving like it. Yeah. It seems like he's, he's emulating things that he's seen, uh, people yeah. with these syndromes mm -hmm. have like where he opens and closes the door three times mm -hmm. and he says mm -hmm. he's he says one two three in like five different languages or whatever mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah thing mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh we sort of answered this one too but do you think he was on fake medication at the very beginning oh yeah <laughs> he's just yeah. taking benadryl this whole time mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I wonder how that came about like what was that fake psychiatrist i think it is like he just went and found an off the books psychiatrist who yeah. just scams people so you know <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was getting conned even back then and didn't realize it yeah so yeah maybe it is, it's just a setup for that <laughs> um this one is like a you know what if everything would have fallen apart if roy would have contacted heather at any point in this film yeah um I mean, like, what if what if it would have happened right in the middle at some point? Everything had to work out yeah. perfectly for Frank to mm -hmm. to pull this off. I feel like if that had happened, Frank would have just cut ties and left. Like, he just called the con off and took yeah. off. Like, he'd probably yeah. had that as a contingency. 
I also think Frank knew he would never reach out to her because yeah, yeah, maybe. He's, he's pieced together like all these, all these ticks and all these things are are brought on by, by Rory himself and and stress and and guilt. So like he's not gonna want to talk to her because he's too afraid. And and if he did reach out to her, then you know he it would have been early on. Yeah. And then at that point, he knew the comment would work. Yeah, and Dr. Klein even tells her, like, she doesn't want to talk to you, so mm-hmm. don't call her. Yeah, it feeds into that, too, by saying, you know, well, mom's always talk, talking bad about you. <laughs> Tell yeah. me you're a criminal, you went to jail, and all this stuff. You're a bad guy. Yeah. So, Would you see him sort of react to that of, like, oh, that's, that sucks. I, I would have liked to have talked to her. You, know? you think the uh, secretary was at Dr. Klein's office? Because that was another person who would have had to have been in on it. Yeah. Like I said, or I do you think like, Dr. Klein was like a real... I feel like he was a legit psychiatrist. He yeah. was in a medical office building with other medical uh, stuff. I think he just, you know, maybe he made enough on this deal working with Frank that he could just uproot and move somewhere else. And that's what he yeah. did. Because he didn't really do anything yeah. illegal. So, you know, maybe True. he just feared reprisal from from uh, Roy. But yeah. I still think he was a legit psychiatrist. That was yeah, the first place fails. that Roy went to was... Dr. Kleins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is a, a, a kind of a post credits. Uh, how long do you think Roy uh, goes before he pulls <laughs> another con when he realizes that babies are expensive and <laughs> life is expensive? <laughs> Working at a carpet store kind of sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I don't think he goes back. You think yeah, he's done? I don't think he does. I, I he think does, he's like, he, you can tell, like, he has that genuine, like, thrill every time he does it. And I feel like, you know, maybe this this new life supplements that, but it seems like people always end up going back. You know, it's like H.I. and Racing Arizona where he, he gets with Ed and, like, everything is great. But then when, you know, things start to go down, he, he gets itchy and he wants to go back to Robin convenience stores again i think yeah. the, the difference there is that you show he shows in that movie that he you know he might not be set out to domestic life and in this movie i feel like he replaces the the rush of conning people with the rush of being a dad you know yeah. and, and i think they're, they're showing that but he has angela go return the money that he's that she scammed out of that chick yeah, you know? if, if it had really been about the con he would have been like all right well, let's go buy a bunch of ice cream with that 300 bucks or whatever and instead it was like no i'm gonna i'm a good father i'm gonna make you take it back you know take it yeah. back to her and teach you the lesson i taught you how to do the con but you know yeah uh, he's developed a conscience at this point yeah yeah P- plus he goes into sales so Essentially, he's still doing <laughs> yeah, the same thing. I thought thing. of that, too. That's like, true. you know, you can still scam people legally, you know, <laughs> yes. when you're doing commission-based sales. So you think he'd be exactly amazing rules. at it, too. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder if that's why he went specifically into, like, carpet sales or whatever. Because it's like, <laughs> the temptation's probably there, but it's not like car sales where you can really reel somebody in with a ton yeah, of money. So maybe that's he's true. Just, or corporate sales. Yeah. Or something like that. So he just... Maybe he tricks him out of a, an extra couple hundred bucks or something here and there, but it's all you know, on the books. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he probably uh, only does it for schlubs that he <clears throat> believes deserves it, you know. He would have <laughs> took that doofus for a ride if she yeah. was in there. <laughs> How long had Frank been planning to do this? Like, at what point yeah. do you think he decided to set this this con in motion versus, you know, how long yeah. it is. Cause obviously he knew Dr. Klein. He had Angela, you know, picked to, to at least start this off. He'd mentioned the thing with Chuck before any of this even happened. So was mm-hmm. he planning on just getting in with, you know, uh, it was, I'm assuming he just thinks on his feet. So he's constantly changing up the things. So maybe the original plan was actually do the con with Chuck with Roy and split the money. But he realized with Roy going off the rails, not taking his meds and becoming a wreck that maybe he could, finally fleece him for all of his money i feel like maybe so. he was left in the lurch a few too many times by roy yeah. uh having his little episodes and it was just like i don't want to be pulling these 350 dollar or a couple thousand dollar jobs for the rest right. of my life it's a lot of work for <laughs> yeah you know, and he's doing all the work he's doing all of it. basically yeah, comes in at the especially end when roy just stays at home and freaks out and has an ocd episode for carpet. two days or whatever it was <laughs> yeah. you know so to me, that was what tipped me off that this was all going to be a con when he said he complains about Roy having all this money that he doesn't have uh, mm-hmm. and that he knows a psychiatrist that Roy should talk to. It was like he basically mm-hmm. was that was where he was like, fuck this. Like, I'm done <laughs> dealing with this guy's fake illnesses or whatever. I'm just going to take all his money and, and run. Yeah. Um, so I felt like he'd been planning it for a while, but I wasn't sure at what point he decided to <laughs> set this con into motion. Yeah. And I kind of feel like he 
he sort of is justified in a way where it's like, this is what you told me to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is how you yeah. taught me to do cons. It's like, if I ever ran into a situation where I could t- pull, you know, a huge con like this, I should take it. So I'm just doing what you told me. Yeah. <laughs> 